Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. Alright, I've been on a little board game break recently, and the reason for that, really quickly, is that I got a new synthesizer. Uh, Modal Electronics Argon 8 Wavetable Synthesizer. So I have been spending a lot of time with that lately, and I am actually working on a new album, which has been over f almost, oh my god, five years since I have written and recorded an album, and I have been feeling the pool to get back into music, and so you will probably be seeing fewer board game videos from me over the next uh, few months. I'm still going to try to do about one a week, hopefully. But I am spending a lot more of my hobby time with uh, music right now. But I did recently pick up the new Battle Systems Core Space expansions. So I did want to make a video taking a look at those because they are very cool. And once again, I get super excited about this game. And I get super bummed out that I do not have the space to keep this game set up. I'm really looking forward to the time when my wife and I have enough money and times that we can remodel our garage so that I can have a little larger hobby room and then my wife can have this room as a dedicated sewing room because I really want to keep some, you know, I want to keep terrain set up to play core space because I think this is one of the most interesting miniatures games that I know of and these two sets here are going to make it even more interesting. So until that time I'm probably probably not going to actually get a chance to play the game just because I would have to keep it set up for at least a week if to make it worth the time and the effort if I have to take it, I want to play something else and just like having to undo everything and put it away. It is a pretty big, it, it's a big time commitment, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean that I'm not excited about the game because I super am. And these new expansions are awesome. One of my favorite things about Core Space are the NPCs and how they can throw some major monkey wrenches into your well-laid plans as a player. It's a very unique system in that it adds a lot to the game and it's quite simple really. You don't have to do a whole bunch of, uh, it's, not, it's not a super fiddly and uh, it's not a super fiddly system that needs a lot of upkeep or a lot of uh, you know stat checking or anything like that. Controlling the NPCs is super easy and it adds just a ton to the game. It really makes the, the battle spaces, the installations, the setting come alive in a way that a lot of miniatures games, in my opinion, do not. And so this first one is called Shift Change at Megacore, and it is a civilian pack. So this says uh, Shift Change at Megacore is a civilian pack for core space that adds two new NPCs. Workers going about their business it actually adds two new NPC groups. You have the workers going about their business and the scavengers attempting to loot the area before you. So the scavengers are super cool and that they are two NPCs, Salazar and Molly, and they are going out through the, the places, the installations, the spaceships, the battle stations, and the, the space stations, and they are trying to get the loot before the players do. And they have access to these trap doors that represent like back passages and, and air ducts and and just ways that they know how to get around the, the installations that other players and NPCs do not. Now, unfortunately for myself and a few other people who also don't like resin, uh, these new expansions, the miniatures are all in resin. 
I totally get it. I totally understand why battle systems have to do that. It's just cheaper for them to produce at this quantity with resin rather than PVC. They are very detailed, very nice minis. I just find working with resin to be a real pain in the ass. It's brittle, you really have to clean it. And it's, some of the pieces are so tiny. I mean, there's like this, this arm in here that I am not looking forward to. Look at that little tiny arm there. I mean, that thing is just minuscule. So I'm already dreading putting these together. I just need to find the patience to do so. So both the, the all the minis in both expansions are resin. So if you're not prepared for that, just uh, keep that in mind. You also get uh, five new event cards, the avenues of escape from under your nose, big score. You had one job and multi-pass. Um, once again, I did want to mention real quick just how much I love the, the character art in this game. It is really, really good. I believe it's done by, I think it's all done by uh, Nick Greenwood. And he's got a fantastic style. I would love to see a an art book for Core Space, an art and lore book. I think that would be a lot of fun with maybe some short stories or something. But then you also get your, your cards here, or your character cards. So you have your workers. Now the workers have their worker character sheet and then they can also double as regular civilians if you didn't want to use them as workers, but just as civilians. But as workers, they are going to have a few new classes. They have a management, an operations, an engineer, and a scientist. And there are some new gear. There is this new nanotech gear, which is pieces of gear that is uh, half the size of the smallest in the base game. And so you can find these and you can carry more gear on your character. And then you also get here, you get your scavengers. So you have Salazar and Molly. Again, these two characters have their own AI chart and they're going to be going out and they're going to be trying to fill up their backpacks with gear before the player characters can get it. And then of course the um, scavengers can also be hired as crew members. And there are, here's the access panels that they're going to be able to use to, to access, you know, back, back channels and back routes through the installations, a whole bunch of new gear. And then their scavenger um, class board here with some new scavenger skills. So their workers and the scavengers have new skills and those are gonna be detailed in the little booklet here. So the booklet tells you everything you need about the scavengers, using them as NPCs. Now the scavengers, when it's their activation, you don't roll a D6 to determine what they do. They kind of have a flow chart depending on how close they are to loot. And they want to avoid danger, but they want to get the most loot. And so they're gonna be kind of doing that. And once they get loot, they're gonna to wanna to take it back to a safe space to where you can't get it. And the hatches, it explains there. And then you have your civilian workers. Now those civilian workers will roll the civilian D6 to determine what they're going to do. And then you get three missions that focus on the scavengers and the workers. You have your vocational skills. So those are gonna be the skills that the workers are gonna use. And then you have some extra rules about uh, different ways to use the computers and doors and equipment and some of the new uh, the new icons that you're going to encounter and some of the new equipment you're going to be encountering so very cool expansion again just adding just adding a handful of of npcs to the uh, to the maps can really change up the way that the game feels because you never really know what they're gonna do. They're not completely unpredictable. It's not like they're just completely random. 
you can kind of determine, you know, you can you, you can guess at what the NPCs are going to do in this game. And a lot of times you can be close to right. But it's also really neat because they're always, it seems like they're always getting in your way or, or just making things more difficult. And speaking of making things more difficult, here we have the Rogue Purge. So what happens when the Purge disconnect from their masters, resisting their conditioning and trying to blend in? These new NPCs may not be hostile at first, but the time will come when they know too much. They can also be fielded as a unique crew that can craft their own equipment. And I think a, I think a trader crew of Rogue Purge only begins with one mini, which is kind of cool. All right, so yes, these are purge that have like disconnected from their hive mind and they've like clothed themselves in these rags and stuff and they are trying to get by as like independent as uh, sentient beings now rather than just these kind of like android robot things hell bent on destruction. But again, this is, can be used as a new group of NPCs that can go around the battlefield and you will roll your purge die. And depending on what you roll, like how depend uh, will dictate how they act. Um, there are purge remain tokens. They will target enemies differently. I believe that they will also fight the regular purge at some point. But then you could also use them as crews. Uh, so building crew, unlike other crews, Rogue Purge do not select traders up to a point limit when building a starting crew. Instead, their rookie starting crew is always a single live one with no equipment and no other characters. So that's really cool. I definitely want to play through the three missions in here using a, um, a purge a rogue purge crew. I think that would be a very different experience. So this tells you how you're going to be using um, the different purge for your crew, including using the spiders. And then you get your three missions. And then you have your purge skills. And then a few other uh, um, additional rules. Here you have your purge ship the home vessel with all kinds of new gear. More new nanotech here. And then you have your rogue purge as the crew. You have Harvey Freeman, new one. Um, Dead Eye, HV2. You have a couple other crew members, Neo and Third. Many and Dev On. And then on the back side here, you have when you're using your Rogue Purge as NPCs. You have their, their uh, five of them, and you have your, your NPC side. And then you also get a few new event cards. Dodgy Disguise, Decay Protocol, The Wanderer, Hive Mind Override, and Fast Learners. And then once again, your, um, your resin minis. I think this guy is really cool looking. The trade-off being you have to deal with resin. And then finally, we have the Dangerous Days campaign book. So this is a new campaign. This book contains new rules that make things harder. It also contains a series of one-off missions that Battle Systems has been publishing on Mission Mondays on their blog. So this says that, so this new campaign takes place immediately after the campaign in the base game. And it says months have passed since the victory of the Harbinger where a major purge invasion was averted. The elation was short lived, however, as day to day life for most has gotten worse. The purge have redoubled their efforts and are fighting with a new fanatical ferocity. Trade loots, trade routes have been hastily closed and many world governments are turning away outsiders. The Galactic Crime Commission has swung to the political right, and the tentative goodwill between them and the traitors has long gone. So it sounds like the world of core space is very, 
<laughs> is echoing uh, our real world and that it has become a total shit show of extreme right politics. Uh, yeah, maybe too close to home right now. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now. It's been making, uh, making focusing on having fun a little more difficult than, uh, than it usually is, at least for me. But here we have some new rules. So this uh, campaign book contains all of the rules from the small books and the mini campaign. Additionally, it has this new setup to where things are just going to be more difficult because the you know the, the the galaxy is having trouble. Trade routes have breaking down broken down. Um, it's harder to keep your ship in tip top shape. It's harder to to level up. It just you know the their austerity measures are in place the universe has gotten more hostile and it's harder to survive some people in the original course place thought it was a little easy to survive you never really felt like you were um you were scraping by as a scrappy uh rogue trader crew so this in if you want to use these rules it makes things more difficult just to just to survive it also has rules for playing without the purge and these kind of like um oh what is it anarchistic uh settlements or post-apocalyptic kind of where the purge haven't discovered them yet but your main uh threats are going to be gangs and other npcs again you have your new scavenger rules here civilian workers your rogue purge um, you have some new common rules on how to use some of the different terrain that is available in some of the other expansions and sets. Way different ways to use cover and how cover can be destroyed. And then we get to our Dangerous Days campaign, which I believe is eight missions. And each one will tell you it's it's geared for four players, but again, it's all most of it's co-op or semi-co-op so you can easily play with uh, a single player with one crew just dealing with the purge and the npcs adding in whatever npcs you really want to but it will tell you which expansions you need and which expansions they recommend one expansion you need for a lot of this is the shootout at zeds so just keep that in mind so you get four five let's see six seven little story here eight yes so eight missions in the dangerous days campaign and you get your epilogue then you get a little um, supplement here about painting and then you get your uh, standalone missions again uh, some pretty interesting things here just gonna flip through this real quickly god i love his character art it is it's so good He's got a unique style. Lots of standalone missions. So if you just wanted to set up a game and have some fun with a couple of buddies, very easy to do with this book. Gives you lots of ideas. Then you get um, an FAQ from all the rules from, from everything. Um, a list of errata, one page of errata. And then the new vocational skills, the new purge skills, and then a listing of all your new kind of icons and different kinds of equipment. So yeah, that is Core Spaces, the new stuff for Core Space, I should say. Really fun. Again, I wish I just had the space to keep Core Space set up because I would love to just have an ongoing Core Space game or at least the ability to just constantly be playing this game because I find it so fascinating and such an interesting world and and, and an interesting uh, uh, set of rules. It's, 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 it's a very well-made game in my opinion. Sorry guys, well I hope you enjoyed that and like I said you will be seeing fewer board game videos from me for a few months. I am going to try to do at least four a month. Hopefully I can keep that up with also working on some new music. Um, yeah, I've always done this. I, I, I have so many hobbies and my, my main hobby has always been music, but for the last few years, 
it has become kind of my, my, my secondary hobby with my main hobby being board games. But I kind of feel that relationship changing right now. And so I want to embrace it because I do want to get some new music out there. It has been way too long since I ever released an album. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at Core Space. And we will take a look at something else in a few days. Um, something I've been wanting to play for some time now. So, all right, guys. We'll take it easy and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.